Okay guys, today I'm releasing my source code to my little platformer. It's incomplete and I'm pretty much given up on it so there's no point holding on to the code. I'm going to upload it on GitHub and uh, you can do whatever you like but I'm going to explain a few things, a few things I've learned and uh, hopefully it'll help somebody out there. So this, I'm going to use Visual Studio Code to jump back and forth, but uh, basically this is an incomplete uh, platformer. kind of resembles Donkey Kong a bit without the uh, actual fun. So basically I use this uh, as a test mode to figure out a few things. Uh, jumping, uh, going up and down ladders. and uh, jumping over to higher platforms. It's a little buggy, but for the most part it seems to work. Anyway, this is uh, written in QBasic. I'm not using any compilers, uh, although you can compile it in uh, uh, QuickBasic and even runs in uh, QB64. It doesn't use any advanced features of QB64, but it will still work. QB64 is really compatible with all the odd QBasic uh, features. Uh, even supports a lot of uh, direct hardware uh, options, like uh, the uh, option to read the uh, keyboard states. So one of the things I've discovered while trying to develop this uh, platformer is that reading keyboard uh, movement can be extremely slow if you use the uh, built-in functions or any of the uh, BIOS functions. But if, uh, if we use direct hardware access, here let me just jump all the way down to where my code is. So if we simply just read uh, what's in uh, port 60, hex here, um, keyboard input becomes a whole lot faster. So that's one of the things I've learned that if you want to speed up your, your game in QBasic, avoid the built-in routines and go directly to the hardware. So this gives you a huge speed boost when uh, you're in, in a tight loop and uh, using timers and getting input. Uh, so I found this was a needed thing I needed to do in QBasic in order to make things work. The uh, the remaining things like built-in graphics actually worked uh, quite well. I'm using uh, screen mode 7 which is a 320 by 200 by 16 colors and I'm using the 16 color mode because uh, the built-in QBasic graphics support uh, P-Copy. Uh, let's see, where do we initialize? Here it is, screen 7. Um, so, if I needed to use uh, 320 by 200 by 256, which is uh, screen 13, I wouldn't be able to use P-Copy. I'd have uh, to do things a, a different way. And I found out through testing that P-Copy was actually pretty quick and uh, the overall effect was pretty good for a little platformer. You can still see some flickering with the uh, character there, but you know, it, it actually works pretty good. Uh, so we have keyboard input, a timer happening, and uh, also if you notice, uh, let me go over something. If you notice, we also have a transparent sprite, and uh, let me explain that. So by default, um, QBasic's uh, put command doesn't support uh, transparent uh, sprites, but it, there's a technique, uh, let me find it here. find the command. 
Okay, here we go. So I created a little wrapper here for uh, the, the put command. And if you do a put command with the end and provide a mask, uh, a mask is basically um, an inverted image, a monochrome image of your image. And uh, you apply your image with the or, you, you get a transparent effect when you apply it to the screen. Uh, so that's how I'm getting the uh, transparent character there. Let's go back so you can see that one more time. So when we go over things like a ladder or uh, the other items, see this perfect here, we're going over a ladder and also over those red bars and it's still transparent. So that was one nice effect I learned by uh, just using the built-in commands, I didn't have to resort to any assembly language or redraw my own routines. And it's still fast enough to do something like this in uh, QBasic. So I could have done this game in uh, QB64 and then taken advantage of the uh, better graphics. And uh, But to me, it's just, not as fun. I, I like the challenge of uh, trying to squeeze out as much as I can out of QBasic. So my m main reason for, for doing this is just to learn new things. And uh, I've been able to figure out a few things by having limitations. And when I try to do things with QB, QB64, it's great and all, but there's so many things that you could do in QB64 that you kind of lose track of ever completing anything and uh, so I, I'm more able to accomplish something in uh, QBasic because of those limitations. It might not turn out as great but most of the time I can start and finish except for this game. This game was uh, I think I, I uh, put too much on my plate. Uh, I haven't done anything like this before and I think I tried to do too much but the uh, next game I'll attempt will be much simpler and I will use some of these techniques um, uh, in the next game. So a lot of the uh, the drawing and uh, loading things in, I will still use. So the way I did the uh, the map loading, a uh, very simple way. Let me just find it. Here we go. So this is the entire map, and it's um, a very simple way of drawing things. Each character represents. Uh, one of the bitmaps. So we have the L here, and that represents the ladder. So everything I've done in this game has been hand-coded. I didn't use uh, any kind of editor, although for for the uh, Mario character here, I did zoom in on some bitmap images and just basically recreated the colors. But I didn't use uh, any icon editors or paint programs to do this. This is all input by hand. And so that's another thing I learned. Don't, don't do that. It takes too much time. Uh, even though this is OK to look at in an editor, it's really difficult uh, making minor changes. If you wanted to change the colors or something, it just uh, it becomes difficult. So that's another thing I learned. Uh, use tools. Don't try to do things manually. And uh, overall, the uh, biggest mistake I think I made, uh, I started writing code without knowing uh, what I really wanted to accomplish. I wanted to do a platform game. I should have figured out exactly what platform game to do and uh, create the levels uh, on paper or uh, somewhere else basically and go through it and know exactly what's going to happen in the game so I could code it better. When you start coding and you don't have an uh, end goal, it just keeps going on. You're just developing more code for what you think you might need it and uh, you might not end up needing it for that at all. So this is pretty much what happened here. I, I wrote a bunch of code and although some of it I can still reuse, there's a lot of code here that uh, I probably won't be using, but I'm not going to let it go to waste. I'm going to upload it on my GitHub, and uh, you can check it out uh, 
link will be in the uh, video description. Thank you.